Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal 4 tutorial. Today's video we're going over something which means we can press E to interact with something or whatever we're looking at. We're going to transform into that object, kind of a little bit like Gmod Prop Hunt if you've ever seen that. So let me hit play and show you what I'm going to make today. So again, I can get in, if I walk over to this kind of cuboid, what I'm going to do is press E and then if I hit it, we can interact with it like that. Now you don't have to have the line trays visible on screen like that. The only reason I've got that is so I can see where it is that I'm clicking on, just so I can easily interact with it. Again, you can see now we are now at this cuboid and we can control it, move about and all that good stuff. If I go to the cube, I can do the same thing and now I'm controlling the cube and even this character here like so. Now none of these have any animations and you can set up separate animations for them if you want to, but I've not done that and I'm not going to go over that today because I do have other videos on creating animation blueprints and setting up animations and all that good stuff, but I will show you today how to assign different animations to the meshes which you're transforming into. For example, if I press R, I can transform it back into my original mesh, which also has the animations working on it perfectly like so. So this is what we're going to be setting up today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, which for me is third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but for you it could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And then once we're in here, what we want to do is we want to create an action mapping or just use a keyboard event. But I'm going to do an action mapping as it's slightly more efficient. So I'm going to go up to edit up on the top left and project settings. And once it's loaded, we're going to go down to input on the left down here. There it is. And we're going to open up the action mappings and create a new one by hitting the plus action mapping there, naming this as interact or transform or whatever it is which you like. I'm just going to set this to be the E key. And you can set this to whatever key you like, but I'm choosing E. And the benefit of action mappings is you can set it up to be multiple keys, so E or F. You can set it up to be on different consoles, so on PC, Xbox, PlayStation, and you can also set up key bindings as well. But once you've set that up, we're going to close it, and back in our event graph of our character blueprint, we're going to right click and search for what we named it. So I named it Interact, so now you can see we have that action events interact here, like so. Out of pressed, what we're going to do is we're going to get a line trace. So pressed is line trace by channel. And that's so we can just draw a line straight in front of the player to see what object we want to interact with by simply just looking at it. So what I'm going to do is then get a reference to my camera. Out of this is get world location. And that is going to go into start of the line trace. So we're going to start drawing this line from where the player's camera is. Then we just want this to go straight forward in a line. So we're going to come out of the camera again and get the forward vector. So we know which way is forward, which way the player is facing. And the return value of that is going to go into a vector multiplied by a float. Now this float here is basically the distance of the line, so how far forward we want it to go. I'm going to set this to be 500 units, but you can set this to be absolutely whatever you like, but 500 seems to be a good value for me. Then we're going to come out of the get world location once again, and get a vector plus a vector, connecting that into the multiplication there, and the return value of that is going to go into the end value of the line trace. And the reason we're doing that is just so it keeps it going in a nice straight line. If you don't add it to the world location, it will kind of go off at a bend, which we obviously don't want as that's not then where we're looking. So what we've just set up is a line trace, which is going to draw a line from the player's camera location, straight forward 500 units and end there. And that's again, so we can interact with something. Then after the line trace, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into the return value there. So this is only going to fire off true if the line trace hits something, because if it doesn't hit something, we don't want to try and access what we hit because there's nothing there, so that will give us some errors. So that's why we have this here. And the out hit will go into a break hit result, so we can access all the different options and settings of what we did hit. So we're going to open that up and then come out of the hit component and get a cast to capsule component going into true of the branch. Now there are many different ways of doing this and you can change it to be how you want, but I found this is going to be the best and easiest way for us to do it. So what you could do is instead cast to a specific actor and do it that way, or you could use blueprint interfaces to interact with it instead of doing it this way, and you can even maybe just possess that object. But there are many different ways, and again, this is the best way which I found for you to learn. So after the cast a capsule component, cast failed means we haven't hit a capsule component, which means we don't want to interact with it or try to transform into it. But after the normal execution means we do want to. So we're going to come out of as capsule component, and we're going to get child component like so leaving the child index as zero. So essentially the child component is what is attached to the capsule component, if that makes sense. And I'll show you in a minute why I mean by that, and it'll make a lot more sense. 
and the return value of that is going to go into a cast to skeletal mesh component because we want to transform into the skeletal mesh so this is essentially seeing if we did hit a capture component and the child of that capture component is a skeletal mesh component then we want to transform into it if it isn't a skeletal mesh it will come out cast failed and won't do anything and then the code is done we're not transforming into it and as skeletal mesh component that is what we want to actually use so what we're going to do is get the mesh from up in the top left components list and we're going to set the skeletal mesh like so connecting that into the execution of the cast there and then we're going to come out of as skeletal mesh component here and simply get the skeletal mesh like so and that skeletal mesh will be the new mesh for our set skeletal mesh like so and that is how we're now going to transform into a different skeletal mesh like this so when we press e we're just going to draw a line straight forwards if we hit something we're going to see if it's a capsule component and if it is a capsule component we're going to see if that has a skeletal mesh component attached to it and if it does we're going to transform into that skeletal mesh so let's compile and save that now we're going to set up resetting into our character which you don't have to do if you don't want but i'm going to do it because this is also then showing you how to set up changing the animations as well so just underneath this i'm going to right click and get an r keyboard event like so and what i'm going to do simply is get the mesh again set skeletal mesh like so going into pressed there and the new mesh is going to be the mesh of my character which for me is the sk underscore mannequin like so now to set up the animations to be working we need to come out of the mesh again and you're going to do this for every single one which you're doing so come out the mesh and then set animation mode like so and we're going to set it to use animation blueprint then out of the mesh one final time we're going to set anim instance class and the new class is going to be the animation blueprint which you're using for that mesh which for me is the third person anim bp so again resetting the mesh to be my mannequin setting it to use an animation blueprint then setting it to use the third person anim bp now you probably won't need to do the animation blueprint every single time because it is already set to that but it's good practice to do anyway just to make sure that it is going to work so let's compile and save that now that is going to work for transforming into different objects and different skeletal meshes and then also retransforming into our own one with the animations all working perfectly as well what i'm going to show you now is setting up those objects so you can transform into them so how to set it up perfectly so i've already set three up here for a cube a cuboid and a person they're all the exact same so i'm just going to open up the cube to show you that one so if we go over to the viewport, you can see what I've got in the top left components list is a capsule component and a skeletal mesh. So the skeletal mesh is the cube, and so it's the skeletal mesh which I want to transform into. And the capsule component is the parent of that skeletal mesh, and it's just sized perfectly to fit around it. So again, the line trace is going to collide with the capsule, and then the child of that capsule, which again, we set up earlier, so cast capsule component, get child component, is the skeletal mesh which is what we're transforming into. So if we close this, we can hit play and test it out. If I were to go over to the cuboid, press E, you can see we can interact with it and we've now transformed into the cuboid like so. If we were to do the same with the cube, we can see we've now transformed into the cube and we can move around looking like the cube. Again, kind of like Gmod Prop Hunt if you've ever seen that. So we can kind of hide in a corner, something like this. And the same with the person as well, we can do something along these lines, so hide like that or anything you want and again you can obviously set up animations for this too if you wanted to do that so i think that'll be it for this video is we've done everything we've wanted to do we've set it up so we can transform into and change into all of these different objects which we have obviously i've only got three set up at the moment but you can set up as many as you want and again i'm just going to turn on the four duration of that just so i can see it a little bit easier what you can obviously do is maybe highlight it if you're going to be able to interact with it again i hit e i can transform into all of these different objects if I wanted to, working great like this. Obviously, set up as many different ones as you like. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.